Hey, what's up, everybody? John Scott here for uh, John Scott Podcast in association with uh, Turnbuckle TV, and I'm glad to say back on uh, back on a new podcast. But spoke to him. Uh, I think it was March. I think we spoke, which was just. Um, I think we were just going into lockdown at the time. Um, but yeah. none other than uh, Taylor Essex back on. How you doing, pal? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Um, yeah, I was literally thinking this. It's mad to think that we've seems, spoke before, but then seems spoke like, before, like recently ago, during this, but, yeah, during the same lockdown. But it's yeah, oh, it's just <laughs> it's crazy. It's I forgot it's middle time. of the year. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, like I was saying to you earlier, I sold my car earlier today, and the guy's like, "Oh, when's the MIT up?" I'm like, "Oh, November." We've got like basically a year, and I'm like, oh, "No, we don't." <laughs> <laughs> I just think I just, in my yeah. head, it's still like it's still March because I haven't done anything since March. I'm wondering how many people five years ago, you know, like when they do those appraisals and they say, where do you see yourself in five years? Oh, no right. one could have predicted this. Yeah. All those jokes about, <laughs> I don't have 2020 vision. And now you're just like, this yeah, is what it is. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, literally, this is going to be um, during during the COVID instead of during the war. This is going to be the new thing, I'm sure, oh, for, yeah, for many years that- to come. For, yeah, you can imagine that people, people's kids are going to hate this because all it's going to be like is, oh, you think you're bored? Try it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be um, the new thing. Any money. I'll, so, I'll use um, it on my kids, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. They're, they're going to be used to it. That's the thing. Yeah, gonna, the, the littlest one probably doesn't even this, realize. Uh, She's just, yeah. yeah. Just oblivious. Um, but yeah, what a, what a time to be alive, people. But um, nonetheless, when we spoke last, I think actually you was like my first guest when I started back up with a podcast in general um, before we left WrestleLine and, and I went over to Turnbuckle. So, um, and I know around that time we were just going into lockdown and we were kind of back then we were kind of, we didn't know too much what was going on, but mm. obviously we're in uh, mid June almost. And uh, we still, we're, we're slowly, but surely somewhat coming out of it with very much messages, but um for, for the most part, we're still in that uh, same sort of routine. However, uh, I know speaking off air, you were talking about um, you're now going to modify your garage, which was part of the reason you sold the car in the first place. Um, how's, <laughs> how's that project going to come along? And uh, what was the experience or what has the experience been like since uh, you haven't had a facility to go and uh, work out in? Um, yeah, well, to be fair, like I, I work out when I could before, but I think maybe two weeks before lockdown started, before everything closed, I had just mm-hmm. like got a, a proper meal plan sorted finally, a proper workout plan, and I wasn't just sort of stumbling into the gym um, and just sort of going on doing something that was you know available or mm-hmm. just sort of following Torino <laughs> around trying to keep up with him because he's a madman in the gym, you know. Like I just finished mm-hmm. a set, I'm like, oh great, one set down, and he's like, that's the warm up, um, you know what I mean, like. <laughs> Like so, I'm fi- finally happy to. I was like, yes, I can start this and power through. And then lockdown happened. So, yeah, you know, I um, the stuff I've got is is good. Like I'm I'm fortunate enough that I've got a few things. Like and my, I know I so many people I'm talking to don't have anything. So all their workouts mm-hmm. and body weight stuff. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, my plan is to convert my garage into a gym because currently I'm dragging in like workout bench and dumbbells and like the bench press stuff and into my uh, conservatory which is like my kids toy room so i'm like working mm-hmm. out and there's like a peppa pig doll like right next to me or like the whole cast of toy story is staring at me so i was like no i'm gonna i need to sell this car get my garage sorted and turn it into a proper gym <laughs> yeah I just I'm up can, the window, um... like staring at me like i was working out the other week and i just had all three of the kids just sort of like hands on the glass at the conservatory door just looking and laughing at me <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, I, I can relate to that um, with doing the, uh, the video content and podcasting and whatnot. I every time I was having to do it at home now um, because we used to use um, <clears throat> the arcade in Leon C for most of it um, mm. to do that stuff in. Uh, it was literally every time I was doing it on a daily basis, I'd have to set everything up, take everything down, and it was just an absolute chore to be yeah, doing that. Yeah. Um, uh, now, thankfully, um, I have a little man cave at the back of the garden that I've kind of literally <laughs> had to throw out a lot of stuff to make it that way. But uh, I can have it set up all the time, which does make a lot of difference um, mm. when you can just go in and just get straight on with it without the uh, whole the whole pre side of it, man. It's, it can be quite um, draining 
stops uh, by the time you get to actually yeah. doing anything. See, with my thing as well, I'd, I'd, I'm not gonna lie, I'd, let's leave it there, and then I'd finally finish my workout, I sit down, I'd be oh, like, relaxed, and then I just have my girlfriend just be like, "Are you gonna put that way then?" And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> straight away. So yeah, yeah, that is so. If I get um, that, that, yeah, all sorted, it'd be in great. In terms of uh, in in terms of the the wrestling that we, you know you've uh, kept up with, have you? Have you been watching much of the mainstream stuff, or are you um, are you just kind of on other things now, like a lot of the other wrestlers seem to be? Um, yeah, well, I've I've watched a few bits. Like I've I've tried to watch the I've watched two pay I've watched uh, what did I watch Money in the Bank and Mania, which I think they're the only pay per views so far. I watched mm-hmm. them. Um, I've sort of yeah I, I watched them. I think the, the main reason I watched Mania is because I think the last time we done the podcast, um, me and you were talking about it. And we I did, think it was yep. you that was saying, like, oh, I think they're going to do something special. It's not just going to be another no fan show. So I was like, OK. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then to be fair, was, those, uh... they were crazy. <laughs> the, the matches that they've done, like the um, Boneyard and the, the Cena one, I, they were right. funny. Like, I, you know, it's that sort of thing. I watched some old matches of, you know, of a scroll through, things like that. I mean, trying to watch bits, but at the same time, I'm just... It's Every time hard. I watch it, the next day I'm just like, oh, I just want to wrestle now and get really mm-hmm. like frustrated that I'm just sitting at home doing nothing. Uh, so yeah, I um, I it kind of rings a bell now us talking about WrestleMania and uh, the uh, the biggest mistake I ever made for WrestleMania this year was the fact that I. I was dropping a podcast every day on like mm. we were doing classic matches from all the old WrestleManias which had all these extravagant, amazing crowds in it, um, like WrestleMania 3 and WrestleMania 8 and all this stuff. And then I finally got to this year's WrestleMania, and he had this wonderful intro. I think they kind of like mocked themselves with the whole Pirates of the Caribbean theme. Yeah, but I also I thought, think okay, they would have taken good. it seriously if they had the actual crowd. Oh, they would have done, yeah. yeah. And it was but clearly was they mocked they... before as well, because you had like the yeah. Miz in it who wasn't actually there. Sure. Like, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then they did like that whole. Um, they had those piece together all the different national anthems. I thought, oh yeah, that that works for me. And then all of a sudden, light bulb goes off and the show starts. And it's um, what's his name of Gronk. I couldn't stand the pair of them. They were like two teenagers having their first beer or something. The way they were acting, it was just oh man, I was oh, just taken yeah, oh, out I, of it. Actually, I remember that. Yeah, because. Um... <sighs> They were the hosts. Yeah, no. uh, you know, that was, that was cringy. <laughs> it was so over the top. I was like, wow, is this what we've come to now? These two guys are just going to literally chat like teenagers on their first beer um, mm. they've ever had. And, uh, and yeah, it was just... Uh, those matches were just really, really hard to watch, um, the ones indoors. And, uh, and, yeah, I mean, the Boneyard match, like, I've got to be honest with you, I'm not your typical fan enjoys that whole um, cinematic style yeah. match, but I thought the way they shot it and the fact they didn't have commentators through it um, mm. really played well because it, but it only works if you've got the right character in it. Like Undertaker makes perfect sense, but I wouldn't want to see it with like, you know, everybody <laughs> like Cesaro and Daniel Bryan mm. next week or something. Yeah. Um, I also and, just think it's, uh, yeah, so, I just say, yeah. I just think it's one of those things. It was is a nice change. Like watching those no, the no crowd stuff, and obviously you, they don't want silence. And I just there's so much. I don't know if it's extra trash talking, but I, mm-hmm. I just I don't know. That that was what was throwing me was all the trash talking. <laughs> there was so much yeah. of it. <laughs> that on the other matches. Yeah, it was only because you can hear it. I'm sure they do it just as much on the normal mm. shows, just to sort of get you know. Like, yeah, but it you was see like the way they were coming in the normal out. matches. It, but yeah, yeah like, but it, uh, the entrances, they were coming out looking at nobody. I, I, I was like, they so become so robotic that they can't really adapt now mm-hmm. to having no fans and like just work to a camera yeah. rather than looking at, at, at walls, essentially, <laughs> um, which is all that was there. I mean, they did light it up really well, but I thought, um, I don't know if you saw NXT, the last one that they just did, the In Your House uh, no, show. No, but apparently it was good, so I'll, I'll probably Very watch good. That much easier watch and the reason for me i enjoyed it is because like most takeover shows they darkened everything else out other than the ring 
Mm. So they just focused on the strength, which is the two wrestlers in the ring. And it made a lot yeah. of difference because then you couldn't you couldn't tell that they was just in a flipping um, you know performance yeah. center. You and you couldn't see that fan spinning around at the top. Little oh, yeah. things like that. The uh, one that really, fan threw, in that really threw me out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it did help the whole viewing. But you know, through this, I think the one thing that this um, this whole lockdown with wrestling has shown me. For me, anyway, my personal opinion is that fans really do matter um, mm. on wrestling shows at times. And like, I think for me, I need to hear that reaction from fans. Yeah, um, definitely. I was kind of taken out of it. I, I yeah. think if it have maybe if they'd have cut the card by like ten matches and just had <laughs> one night, it might have been a bit more doable. But I don't know. They had so many matches. That were just like that. I thought, blindly. I feel is, bad this for is, everyone I mean, who's two... like first mania it was, or like for especially oh. Andrew. In my head, I was yeah. like, have him lose and wait, and let him have it. Let him have a big moment because I do. Sure. It, you know, let him have a big moment when he can. Because I don't give it to him now. I was, but then again, at the same time, I was like, no, he should win. But it's one of those mm-hmm. awkward things that you like. You was happy that he won, but at the same time, like he deserves better than that. And like I said, everyone whose first mania it was, I feel mm-hmm. like they must feel a bit like. Don't know. To them, does it? I don't know. To them, does it still feel like mania? But surely the biggest thing's <laughs> got to be walking out and seeing those, you know, thousands of people, yeah. and you're like, Shh, you know what I mean? Like, but yeah, um, I hope he gets that opportunity. I hope instead, he doesn't. Lose they just it walk out and see the... like Michael Cole sitting there <laughs> <laughs> with Gronk. Uh, yeah, at the top, oh, just cheering you on. Come on, buddy. Yeah, I mean, it's just a nightmare um, scenario for me. But um, yeah, they they have been letting some fans back in now to the NXT with like um, mm. this. Oh yeah, like but the, the problem like is the hockey. It looks like a hockey thing, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks like, like a hockey thing. But the, the fans, the, it's become a studio audience. It's like Vince McMahon's dream because I'm sure there's somebody at the end like holding a sign up when to cheer, when oh, to yeah, boo. They're, they're all the in right the t shirts. Yeah. They're all wearing proper merch T-shirts. It looks like um, it looks like a two K um, game. It looks like the crowd's yeah. in the games. Like you look turn around, <laughs> yeah. and they're all wearing like WWE merch. There's not a single Bullet Club shirt in inside. What, like that. what um, what I couldn't believe that I was reading is that the fans that were in there Sunday um were there for nine hours. Um, what? so they've already filmed this Sunday's backlash. That's already been taped. Um, oh, okay. And that was before the live NXT. So I was thinking, geez, man, I've been knackered by the time yeah, NXT that. came. On. Like, oh, I, I assumed I haven't really watched it with any of the fans. I assumed that was I mm-hmm. thought that was the NXT roster watching or they just random us. No, no, no. Random. They've actually had random. They had some of them are developmental stars as well. That we yeah, probably so like, wouldn't know that yeah. they are because we've never seen them. But they have let in some fans. Like, you know, there's in very recent times, there's a guy that always wears a green top um, at the, the front Lesnar of guy. every WrestleMania. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, I think so. I don't know what I know his name, that, what they call meme, him. There's that meme guy. He managed to returned. buy his way in. <laughs> so Jesus he was Christ. missing it that, that, that much that he was waiting outside. And apparently they, <laughs> I don't know how much he paid, but they let him in. <laughs> Oh so, Jesus! Pr- pretty crazy time. Only the WWE could uh, be doing things yeah. like that. I but guess, then again, um, like, have you seen? This... Did you watch UFC? Like, did you I watch did. Any of yeah, that? yeah, yeah. Like, pretty crazy. Part of me liked that because I'm thinking mm. like you can hear ev- like the, the echo of them hitting each other. You're like, oh shit! You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's crazy. Well, what was what was what was fascinating about that as well? Um, I was listening to Joe Rogan's podcast, and I know you do as well. Is that yeah. he was saying that. Uh, a lot of the guys were taking tips from what DC was saying on the commentary. Yeah, so like, he was, if he was DC saying he was giving an example. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> he was saying he was stuff like, oh, he's picking out. Yeah, because yeah, he's saying like, oh, you know, like, um, what was he saying? Oh, look, you, there, something like it. Oh, they, if DC saw something in like their game, yeah. like, oh, look, that's where he's that's where he's gonna slip up. The other guys, well, oh, cheers, mate. And the same as they can hear, they were saying they could hear their corner men as well. Like, yeah, yeah. They, they can hear the guys being like, cover up, you know, cover up. Like, don't, you know what I mean? Like, pull back, pull your punches to like 80% so you're not gassing yourself up. And they can actually hear, mm-hmm. like, and he was saying, but yeah, because, which is mad though. And then you, they're hearing about them buying an island so they can, they can run yeah, shows yeah. with um, people for, that aren't American, which is mm-hmm. good. Like, I'm happy things are, thing is like people are always going to find a way to do stuff like there's a pub there was a pub i drove past the other day and they found a loophole so they're doing like pub but takeaway so there's like, the doors open they've got like a like a stable door like so it's like half That's open fantastic. 